What's happening? This is the Tap In Podcast. We are live inside the Tap In studio. Man, I got a special guest in the building all the way from Agtown, Arlington, Texas, for those who don't know. Mr. Scope Brazy in the building, yeah, man. Yeah, what's popping? You know, what's biggest good? five in the building, you know. You only had to come tap in with the right people. You That's know, so right, I man. Appreciate, appreciate you. Yeah. Nah, sure. Yeah, man. Man, I want to um, I want to get into your story, but I want to go back. I want to go to the beginning, man. You sure? I'm sure. I want to go. I'm positive. I don't think you're I, ready for I want to go to the beginning. <laughs> All right, come on. Yeah. So you're originally from the, uh, Louisiana, I read, right? Yes, sir. What, what part of Louisiana? So uh, I'm from New Orleans. Okay. Uh, most of my family from the Ninth Ward and the Seventh Ward. Okay. So I, but I grew up, I left New Orleans probably when I was like in third grade. Mm, okay. And so that was what, you know, my upbringing is and what my culture is a lot about, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. And so w- you moved from third grade to here? Yeah. Okay. To Arlington? Yeah, to Arlington. It, okay. What was Arlington like back then, man? Man, honestly. Because I, I get say, two different stories w- from people. I would give you the best analogy. I would call it a pot of gumbo. Mm. Because it's a mixture It's a mixture of like just everything. It's not just, oh, people from here or just people from Arlington. It's people from everywhere that come to Arlington. You mm. know what I'm saying? I, when I got there, it was people from Louisiana. It was people from Memphis. It was people from... Wherever genre of the world was there, you know what I'm saying? That was just where everyone came. It was kids from Dallas that lived in Dallas from the hood in Dallas and moved to Arlington because their mamas got their little Section 8, and they, you know what I'm saying, was able to be who they is now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of people that did move to Arlington was searching for a better life. Mm. That I would say from my parents, you know what I'm saying? You know what? I feel like as an outsider, because I'm, I'm an outsider. I'm from L.A., and I moved here probably like eight years ago or something like that. Sure. Arlington seemed like um, I'm not saying it's just like, but I'm saying it's like a um, it's kind of giving me Cali vibes. Sure, where it's sneaky dangerous. It's you know very what I'm saying? Sneaky dangerous. <laughs> it's you know getting I mean? worse now, but really back then, back then we didn't do too much of the shooting and none of that. We we used to get down to business and put our hands up, but nowadays it's crazy out here. Really, like, for sure, it's it's really turning into. <laughs> the place you really don't want to come to, but it's also still a great place to live. Mm, okay. And I remember um, talking to you, and you told me that you left Arlington, or you left Texas, and then you went to Cali, and then yeah. you came back. How old were you when you left? Uh, I left I left Texas when, like right after high school because I was just – I got kicked off the football team my last year in high school, and I was just like, you know what? Like, I got to change. Like, I had my, my first kid, so I was like – I was like, I gotta get out of here. Cause yeah. it was it wasn't getting no better for me. It was going straight downhill. It was either jail, death, or What leave. was you into back then? Like what was you just the yeah. streets? Yeah, the only thing I wanted to do. That was I was a product of my environment. So I, I got stuck into that lane and I, I didn't know what else to get out of. You know, my thing was I always felt like when I was younger, I was I was the cool kid. I was, you know, I was handsome and shit. So I got all the all the I got all the all the so it didn't matter. When it came down to it, and I, the one thing I looked at it as, like, I was like, man, like, what what made me want to, like, leave and really want to get out of that environment was I wanted to be something else. And mm. I didn't want to be the same thing that I've always been my whole entire life. So I chose an, another route, and I said, I, I just got on a plane one way, and I was like, I'm going to Cali. Really? And I was like, I'll figure it out. And ever since then, I did figure it out. And I'm here today. Is that when music got kind of involved in your life? Or? Uh, I would say it did more so. Uh, a big shout out to my cousin. He here right now, Gun40. You know what I'm saying? He's probably the one that really gave me more inspiration in actually pushing and being an artist. Because he, he probably really don't even understand how much he was an inspiration to me. Because it was like, I would watch him and see what he was doing, and I was far away, and I wasn't able to be around him as much as I was, but I was always watching and paying attention because that's mm. just what I was doing. I was, I'm was i a very visual – I'm a visual learner, so it's like I would watch from the outside and be like, man, I always wanted to do it, but I was always afraid to do it, and that was just something that held me back. But When I moved to Cali, I, I realized I can be who I wanted to be, mm. and that was just a land of opportunity I felt like Cali was because it's – it's so spread out. I thought when I got to the Bay Area, I thought I was going to be in L.A. every second, you know? So, But 
<laughs> Excuse me, but uh, you know, I thought I was gonna be out there every second, but it was like, damn. I really wasn't there. Like I'm like, damn, it's eight it's hours or six, six yeah. seven hours away. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, damn, I, I went to the wrong place. You feel me? So, but other than that, it was it was cool, you know. But I was glad I went there, you know. So what that that first initial you getting on the mic was your cousin? He was already rapping. Yeah, my cousin was already rapping, but my first initial getting on the mic was me just doing it. I think I just I just I sent how, him. How old were you? How old were you when at the time? Uh, I think I was probably what I want to say I was like twenty five mm, okay. when I first when I first jumped on it. Like I was like I was like you know what I sent him a song and he was just like he laughed at it. He was like <laughs> <laughs> he was like you sure? He was like you sure you want to do this? And I was like yeah. He was like all right keep working it. And I was like I was like all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. thinking like he like man that song trash as hell. But it was just he knew I was trying. And that was where he was just like, he didn't want to give me an okay because I'm the type, like, we the type of people that we like to be pushed into that royal. So it's like, if you show me what you about, I'm going to believe in you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So it was more so of that, you know. Okay. And that was at 25. Did you get any motion, like, in the Bay or it was oh, just? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, right when I first started, like, I got motion. Like, I didn't think I was even going to get motion, like. One of the one one of the top artists I would still say to this day from the Bay Area, I am Sue, and then uh, S O B R B E uh, Slimmy B. Mm. Those two those two gave me my first features like yeah like for free no really? nothing they was like nah it's you like but I felt like they did that because they they seen something in me more mm. than I seen in myself yeah and everybody around me didn't realize like what type of person I was they didn't really think I was who I was. Because when I moved to Cali, I didn't portray nothing. I didn't gang bang. I didn't do no showing, no nothing, no flags, no nothing. Because I wanted to be neutral. Mm. I just wanted to be so neutral because I was like, y'all don't need to know my life. Because I felt like I wasn't going to be here that long with them. You feel me? So I was like, but once I started opening up and they started to realize, and they was like, oh, you different. But then they started to realize and be like, oh, you got to pass that. You, you're unlocking to us. And now we're starting to figure you out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's something about the Bay, man. Because I know P, when he left and went to the Bay early, um, La Russell now is popping from, from, oh, the, yeah. from oh, the Bay. Oh, yeah. All my people's fuck with La Russell. Like, uh, one of my good partners that I that I went to school with out there is uh, is La Russell's DJ. You really? Know? Yeah. So it's like, it's it's a whole, like, I used to see La Russell a long time ago. Like, it was crazy before he was even doing what he's doing now. So it's like. I'm like, damn, this is mind blowing to me because it's <laughs> yeah, like yeah. you was cold as hell. Like, and I didn't even realize he was even doing all the music and shit. And it's like, now I see him, I'm like, damn. Like, I used to live down the street where he's like hosting all the backyard venues. And Straight shit. up, I swear to God. Like, I swear, like it's it's crazy. But I think that was the most genius thing he ever did. Like, kudos to La Russell. Yeah. He's a talented man. Like, kudos. Yeah, sure. shout out to Lil Russell, man. Lil Russell. Yeah, God Lil Russell, dang. you know what I'm saying? But one thing I did think was the funniest thing when I moved to California, though, when I moved to the Bay, is how, like, I was literally, because we stayed in we stayed in uh, in North Oakland, so I stayed with my, uh, my older cousin, and I would go to the corner store. They always knew me because I was just a cool little kid coming to the corner store all the time. Everybody, nobody really knew me, but everybody just would be like, what's up? So most of the time I go to the corner store, they be like, oh, what's up, blood? And then next thing you know, ah, oh, man, cuz. And I'll be like, wait, hold the f yeah. What are y'all talking about right now? Like, y'all <laughs> saying blood and cuz at the same time? And I was, like, confused. I'm like, is y'all gangbanging on yourself or is you gangbanging on? I'm like, what, what, like what, what's, what's going on? What's really good? You feel me? So yeah, yeah. I, that was the one thing that stood out to me the most in California was, like, they they bang. They don't, they don't bang, but they bang, like, they areas. Like it's more it's more cold and then oh me saying a word because it's like them saying a word in the Bay Area is different than them saying it down there in, in, in uh, LA in LA for yeah. sure yeah so that was like the mix up I think that blood from Oakland is more stemmed from the uh, the Black Party Black Panthers back then exactly you know what I'm saying exactly yeah shout out to my teacher one of my one of my uh, I can't even think what fucking class that was. That's where I met my son's mom. <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy. Uh, she was a Black Panther, like my teacher. Yes, really. She was a real like had the pictures and everything. It was like the craziest thing, but she was cool. 
Do you, ever, do you ever off. pull on? <laughs> cheat my ass off next level. You ever pull from any of your like like your, that time in the Bay and put it into your like your music? Did any of that have any influence when uh, you was there? Or honestly, the reason why my music is the way it is now is because of the Bay Area. Mm. I would honestly say that it's because of the Bay Area. Really? Because it was like if you go to the Bay Area, you from if you from LA, you know how the Bay is. See, the Bay in LA is like totally different, exactly. though. Exactly. It's like you said the right word. <laughs> it's totally. It's different. Yeah. That's why I'm. That's why who I am. Who I am. You know what I'm saying? Because it's different. It's not the same. It's not something that you can just say. Oh, that's what that is. No, it's like man, I don't know what it is. It's different. Mm. You feel me? So that's why I feel like the Bay is the way the Bay was. Okay. Okay. And because when you told me when we met, we met at the um, what was it at the uh, the, uh, the toy drive? Yeah, the toy drive. You was like, my shit is on some Uzi Vert type vibes. Yeah, yeah. And I was looking at you. I was like, you don't seem like the Uzi Vert type of type of dude. Yeah. But then when I listened to the music, I was oh, like, yeah. okay, I get it. Yeah, it's I get more of it. an upbeat. I'm happy. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. making happy music. Like, like my thing is like my number one fan. I would say is probably like. My son and my mom, you feel me? Mm. So, like, anything they like or they love, they, like, jam it all the time. They talk about it. My son be juiced when he hear it. Daddy, let me hear Let me hear a new song. Let me hear a new song. I'm like, all right. And once he starts to like it, I'm like, oh, yeah, this probably might be something good. Yeah. Because the kids know that they, they got an ear for it. The kids yeah. got the ear for it. You know what I'm saying? I think I think in your lane is wide open too, you know what I'm saying? So, Versus, because I feel like everybody is going hood gangster. Everybody is trying to get in that lane, and it's like that lane is full, man. It's nah, too it many. Is. It's too many niggas in that in that lane. You know it what I mean? It is, but that's that's the main reason why. Because when I first started, I thought I was gonna do trap music, and I was like, I kept doing it, and I was like, I don't like this shit. I just kept mm. saying it, like, but I grew up not really listening to trap music. But it was like I listened to so much other shit instead of just trap music. Like I, I grew up on watching VH1 and MTV in the morning. Yeah. It wasn't just rap music on there. It was everything. You know what I'm saying? So it was like you know the the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You know what I'm saying? Lincoln Park. You know what I'm saying? Lenny Kravitz was coming on there. It's like that was like my genre of what I heard in my ears. What it, it would click for me. You know what I'm saying? So. Do you do you I guess do you understand that the way you appear doesn't uh, like like people be surprised to hear your kind of music? And that's the thing. You want that's what yes. you want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is the main thing of why I portray myself the way I portray myself. Because you would never you would look at me and be like, oh, he do some he do some hood music for sure. Yeah. He gotta be doing some gang banging, whatever type of deathly, you know what I'm saying, vicious music. But then when you hear it, it's like my whole sound is just, it's me. So it's like, and I love that because it's like it literally makes people's ears say, damn. I like, want to listen to what he's I saying. I want to listen to what he's saying. Yeah. And that's why, I like, I'm glad I'm doing what I'm doing because it's my turn to actually bring the outreach to the world to show you that you can be in the streets. You can not be in the streets. You can do whatever you want to do. You just got to put your mind to it. Yeah. Mm. What, what, what would you consider, like, I made it in in in, in music. You like, I got, I'm 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 here now. You know what I mean? What would you consider? What would that be for you? Honestly, uh, I use I use something that I was talking about. Uh, honestly, for for me, I would feel like honestly. Mm, let me let me let me put it in the best perspective, in my in my eyes to actually get it to where it's like. Once you made it in music, you ain't got to really make music no more. Mm. It's like your music speaks for itself. Like right now, you still can go and listen to Michael Jackson. Right now, you can still go listen to Nipsey Hussle. Right now, you still can go listen to whoever you want that was a great artist from now to back then and still be like, if my music is still bringing in a residual income, and making me still be the same person, even if I'm not putting out music, that's when you made it. So you know you have to be independent then. You have to stay independent. True, you do. You do, but not necessarily. Not necessarily. Explain how. How would you, because from my understanding of the music business is everybody, the artist signed to a label, label gives you an upfront loan, 
for you to go make music. You make the music, and then they collect the, the money and they give you a royalty check, what once a year or something like that. Yeah. So how do you how do you keep it with with being in a label? How do you keep that residual coming in? Well, honestly, shoot, when you start off, you got to start somewhere. I'm mm-hmm. not saying that's where you're going to finish at with that label. You can always start somewhere and get to that place where you really want to be at to say you finally made it. But once you do get to that place, that's where I feel like you honestly made it to yourself and to your family and your fans, you know. So that's where I, I get that feeling as where you made it at. It's like you don't have to just, oh, because you had this label, nah, none of that. Like it's really about how, what's your end story? What mm. can you come back and people be like, man, I, I listen to this song every time when I get in this feeling. Or I listen to that song when I get in this feeling, you know. And it's like that's the type of music I'm making, you know what I'm saying, for my end goal, for my end story. Okay. All right. So it ain't really about you signing in or not. Nah. Okay. I, don't, I, I don't. I honestly don't. It doesn't matter to me, honestly. Because I feel about- like, honestly, some people do need it. Mm-hmm. I feel like, honestly, some people don't. If you have the money already up front to go do exactly what you want to do in music, it's not a cheap game. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, I went broke for it. Yeah. Like, to be honest, I went broke for this. Like, I literally spent every last dime that I had. Me and my team literally went psh, blood, sweat, and tears for this, you know? Yeah. And, you know, it was it was moments where we was mad at each other. It was moments where we fight it, fought, fought each other. It was moments where we cried it out. Like, you feel me? It's... That's the way. That's the way it goes, you know. Yeah, and I think I think I think that's dope, man. One, I think that's dope, but I think that's necessary in order for you to get to the to the finish line of, like, I'm making music. I'm I'm sure, sure. I'm surviving and making a living off of my art, my creative, my thoughts. You know what I mean? Not uh, true. I think that's dope, you know. And I just hate to see when I hear artists be like. I signed a seven album deal for a million dollars or something like that. They ain't read the fine print. <laughs> and then it'd be you, like, you, then they'd be like, you then they go back and complain and be you like, ain't what get the a fuck? lawyer or you ain't tell nobody, hey, oh, help me look over this shit. Like, you feel me? Like, you better go ask people. Like, that's why they got fucked. That's why they got the way that it happened to them. You gotta remember, it's a business, Cut, it's cutthroat. It's yeah. cutthroat business. You better pay attention. You better learn you some business for the business run over you. Yeah. <laughs> you so, Have you got those calls from the labels yet? Have you been? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got my first call recently, you know. Mm. I don't want to spill too much. You know okay. What I'm saying? Shout out to one is one. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, the family. Honestly, whenever they first see me, like, they didn't know what to think. But once I got into the room around them, like, they honestly was just like, man, this kid is different. And everybody they brought around, they were like, Y'all better bet your money on them. Mm. I told them, don't trick yourselves out the wrong position. Yeah. If you bet yourself on the right person, I promise you, they gonna tap in. Yeah. I promise you, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. gonna tap in. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been to the A? Have you been uh, tapping in with any artists in the A? Uh, yeah, I've been to the. Uh, I've been to Atlanta. I've been to Atlanta. I, I went to Atlanta when I first started too. I did a. I opened up for like NBA YoungBoy. That shit was crazy. Mm. NBA young boy didn't even come on. I ain't gonna lie to you. The nigga was <laughs> drunk as hell and did not come on. Really? But I went on right before him and rocked it. Like I was, I was wild when I first was doing them shows. There was probably like five thousand people there. I was nervous, mm. but that was like in my beginning stages, and I was just getting my. I felt like I was getting my jitters out. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I still, I still have a tough time once I get on stage, just remembering songs and shit like that. Because I get up there and sometimes I be so oh, overwhelmed. Hype. Yeah, I be so overwhelmed, <laughs> so hype. I'd be like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just get to, I get to ad living on on the mic, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Shout, and then shout out to uh, shout out to other the other homie uh, Tony Snow. He out there in Atlanta. Uh, my cousin also live out there at Gun Forty. He stay in Atlanta now. Um, who else out there? I don't I don't know too many other people out there in Atlanta. But Atlanta Atlanta is another stumping ground that we for sure got to go tap into. Yeah, I feel like I don't know why, but I feel like most artists in Atlanta all work together. They do. They all know somebody that knows somebody that can put you, you know what I mean? In the right position. Yeah. I wonder we were just talking about with your management Kenny, we were just talking about that before you came in about why don't that why we don't have that here locally in Dallas? Cuz everyone hates each other. They're haters. You think so? Yes, they're secretly haters. 
or they're fanned out by the other person because they mad that the other person is going to be bigger than them. Like, it's weird. What? It's weird. I promise you. I promise you. That is, I promise that's, you. That's when crazy I, to me. When, when I walk outside, a lot of people that do know me are mostly afraid to say what's up to me. But, like, my fans, oh, they run up to me like, oh, my God, bro, I remember the show you did last year. Like, run up to me with open arms, and I'm always like, what's up? Like, I'm always with a good smile on my face. Like, I'm never really down. I look I look mad and mean all day, but that's just me. Like, I walk around with a mug. I got a problem of staring, <laughs> so it's like, like I've just been like that. You feel me? So, But I feel like a lot of people out here gatekeep themselves from actually wanting to grow Dallas bigger than what it is. Because Dallas is probably one of the biggest markets ever. Like, Dallas is so huge with talent and artists but it's like everybody wants to keep it into themselves. Or uh, if you hear a new art, if you hear a new artist, I'm like, why don't everybody like? Oh, let's chime into him. Let's figure him out. We don't have the right. We don't. I feel like the blogs don't chime into the right artists all the time. Mm. They pick their little favorite, whoever cool, who they cool with, or whoever they feel like is doing good because they starting to. Excuse me. They starting to bubble, but it's like. I know most of the blogs out here see me doing a lot of shit as in like shows and my shows like it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm like, why y'all not cap- catapulting me right now? Like I'm like, hello. Like I look like a face. I got the face. I look like the person that's supposed to be on the TV screen. Most of these dudes look like the same nigga that walk around all day long. Like, what y'all talking about? Nothing. Most of the time y'all talking about the same shit. Or the same shit that ain't even real, or just talking about somebody else's life. That's honestly what they're doing. I'm t- I'm speaking real shit and that's going on in my life and my music about how I feel, how I went through certain things, and I'm also showing it to the world. You can't you can't say that I don't walk around and be myself 110 percent of the time. You yeah. probably didn't even think I was gonna walk in here with my hair like this. Uh. I know you did. <laughs> no, I didn't. But I was like I was saying, and from me just just meeting you at the toy drive, I told Kenny I was like, he has a star look about him. You know what I'm saying? That's what made me even just gravitate. I'm like, yo, I got I got to talk to you. I want to hear your story. You know what I mean? Just from the outside, and then, and I know I was I know I wasn't the only one that noticed it. Cause I remember a guy was like, "Yo, man, what y'all do?" Yeah, he stopped. Him. He was <laughs> he was like, like, "Yeah, yeah." He was like, "Wait, what y'all do, man?" So it's, I need an autograph or something. <laughs> I was like, "See, I, I, I'm not, I'm not the only one noticing." You know Facts. what I'm saying? Facts. And it, I don't know if it's your presence, it's how you present yourself, how you and you, man. you didn't seem like you was angry, and maybe because it was the toy drive. That you was like coming up to everybody. Hey, I remember you telling some kids, "Hey, y'all better get y'all some footballs. You get y'all some He Man, yeah, some toys." Man. Yeah. I was like. Okay. I, I'm always in a good mood, man. Yeah. I love giving. I love being around the kids. I love just being happy. Like there's no moment to be sad. Even though it was a it was a toy drive and it was for a lot of p- people that were less fortunate in this world, I felt like we were all there to be that vessel and give back to them, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I felt like everybody that did see us and was like, "Oh man, y'all look like y'all something." The police officer lady was in there just like, "I ain't never heard of you, but I feel like I seen you before." And I'm like, I'm like, "You probably have, but you know, when you had a light on you, it don't never go out. Mm. So that's just how it is sometimes. Yeah. I want to get your opinion on something. This I heard this on the, another blog, and they were saying the reason why, because I, I, I read somewhere where hip-hop hasn't had a number one album all year or Facts. something like that, right? Facts. And they were saying the reason why is because now hip-hop has become pop. Facts. Right? It's become pop. And so. But I feel like it always has been. You think so? I feel like it always has been. In what way? And always. Because like, I feel like it's always been like a, a trying like we, to. Like, you got to go back. You got to go back in time. Like, where did hip-hop come from? Jazz. Like, that was all like. See, upbeat. that's not pop, though. I know it's not pop, but jazz was like the reason why that we even pushed that emphasis on hip-hop. Like, it was the the upbeat, the tempo, the slides, the. The flows, all of that—that that was all from jazz. Yeah, but I feel like all that came from jazz. Came from being rebellious. True. It's rebellious music. Exactly. Hip hop came from being rebellious music. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. But <clears throat> when I think of pop, I think of Britney Spears. I feel like where everybody just 
it's popular. That's what pop is. It's popular yeah. music. Facts. But now I feel like hip hop is popular music, and country is kind of like the the rebellious kind of music now. True. You know what I'm saying? True. And what I want to get your opinion on is, do you think the reason why pop or hip hop hasn't like broke through or had a, like a, a a number one album is because it is so pop and it's not like real rebellious music no more. It's like everybody doing it. I feel like everybody's just doing the same thing. Mm. No one is challenging themselves to be different. Like we haven't heard a, a, a new hip hop artist challenge themselves to be different in the music industry like completely. Like we got great artists in the in the hip hop world. Not not to knock on nothing about hip hop, but it's like I don't feel like we've had that spring of like an artist just to be like I'm coming in with something that I ha- y'all have to love. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's me. It's it's raw. It's uncut. But it's me. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what I feel. So I feel like everybody is transitioning to the pop world and doing more poppy and upbeat stuff because that's what's in. They trying to go for what's popular instead of being themselves. Like Sexy Red? Yeah, but Sexy Red, fire. Is like, she? Yeah, she fire. I can't you can't, you can't. You can't. You probably can't. You gotta give her I'm her, older though. You gotta give her her flowers for pushing what she's doing. She's pushing, she's pushing ratchet, sexy you. That's really I, what it is. I get all that. I get all mm-hmm. that. But the music. It's not the best. Oh no, it's not the that's, best. That's what I'm that's it's what not, the, it's not the best. The music is just like so it feel like I could have went in. I, I yeah, I could have went in and did that myself. Sure. And I ain't I ain't no kind of musician. It's for sure mid, but she's fire though. Like regardless, like and fire in what way though? Like I I feel like she's fire because she has an attitude about herself. You feel me? Like she she actually is her character. She's her her character full, full blown and doesn't care about nothing else. You know what I'm saying? And you know, shout out because she's an Aries just like me. So we we daredevils. We gonna do exactly what we want to do. So give me an example of somebody that's not like that, that's in the music industry. Like what, not like Sexy Red? Where, no, where you saying she's fully herself. Who's not fully uh, herself? So Because my thing is <laughs> that... <laughs> I'm like, you don't, want, you don't want me to say that. <laughs> but I'm just saying like... <laughs> it's a lot of people that ain't themselves, but I ain't... I, okay. I ain't don't even put me in that box. Okay. I'm going to keep it, I'm gonna okay. keep it cool. Like, I'm f- with Sexy Red. I like Sexy Red. Like, she's dope. I mean, personality wise, like I, I get. I it. give her a ten. Yeah, I get it. In personality. Like, I didn't even know that was the same girl that made the little thing in my way. Like she had made a little remix of that song a long time ago, and I didn't realize mm. it was still her. I was like, wow, I, I seen that song a long time ago, mm, and I, okay. I thought it was, I thought it was goddamn uh, Asian Doll, but it wasn't Asian Doll. It was actually Sexy Red, mm. but she was going by. I think she was going by something else back then. Okay, I see. I'm more like, I guess maybe the, um, what is the the city girls, the young Miami and them. I feel like they ratchet, but they still got some some cool shit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Cool. Yeah, they cool. Cardi B, they ratchet, just, got some real, cool shit. To be real, they just got the right people behind them. Really? Like the uh, city girls got had the right people behind them. Then they had them. Then, then they had a cold piece of work. The machine. Named Lil Yachty behind them. Like, (laughs) that man was a creator. Like, he is a dope individual. You know what I'm saying? So, they had had pieces behind them that pushed them to help them be who they are. Like, but I don't, I don't. And this is why this is girl rap to me. So, it is, it is. But that's why I feel like the music hasn't really popped off. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like the music hasn't popped off because it's like the, the, and here's another thing I was thinking. Back in the day, they used to be gatekeepers on what kind of music they let through. You know what I mean? Nice. Now there's none. It's just, hey, everybody's in. Everybody can come in. Everybody can do it. Not nah, true. There is nobody who is regulating saying, this, this is a good mm-hmm. song. You know what I mean? And I feel like everybody's just doing it. I feel like that's why hip hop is, is on the de- decline a little bit. I would say, yeah, that's true. That's true, because it's like shit. But I like it like that. I like Do it, you? Like, yeah, because it's like it's every man for themselves. Like, go be who you want to be. See, I don't... even though I, I even though yeah, it's like sticking your genre, sticking what you believe in, what type of music you want to do. But man, I can go do it. I can do. I can go do a whole hood album right now, 
and I'll still make you bob your head to it. And then I can go do some sad shit, and you still gonna bob your head to it. I can go do some rage shit, and you still gonna bob to it. I go do some Latin reggaeton music, and you still gonna bob your head to it. I go do some jazz shit, and you still gonna bob to it. You know what I'm saying? I go sing and be like Beyonce, and still gonna bob your head to it. I'm gonna figure a way into it. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? And my my issue is is people like you that got dope music, got dope songs, but they ain't being pushed. True. Versus the ratchet, easy, one, two beat. All that shit is coming through now. You know what I mean? Nah, true. And I think that's where I'm like, I, maybe because I'm just getting a little older, where I'm just really not in tune to all of it. But the shit that I that comes and I, where I get to hear it, I be like, why do people like this shit? Like I don't yeah. I, maybe I don't get it. You know nah, what I mean? Nah, and nah, I true. I kind of more focus on like kind of underground or people that's on the rise or coming up. So I listen to more of that music. I'm like, this shit is good. You yeah, know what I mean? Nice. But you can't get it on the radio. You can't get it on the playlist on, you know what I mean? On Apple or whatever the case may be. And that's where I feel like that's where the music and the business, that little line, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, where, that's where you got to, that's where you got to have the money to play around <laughs> in this game. Yeah, you got to yeah. have the money. Like, it's a lot of great artists that I feel like that haven't got to their full potential or haven't got to where they needed to be at. But it's all about the money. It's a biz. It's a cutthroat world in this month. Yeah, yeah. Like music, the music industry, I didn't know it was this expensive <laughs> until I got in it, and I was like, man, I don't know about this. Yeah, they talking about five thousand dollars for a beat. They talking about twenty thousand <laughs> for a beat. They talking about all oh, recording this, that, and the third. I'm like, oh man, like, <laughs> I'm about to figure out. I called my cousin. I said, bro, help me figure this out. I need to record at home. Yeah. I don't need to go to the studio no more. Like, <laughs> hell nah. Like, I'm I was wasting so much money going to the studio. Mm. Engineers not even telling me, hey, you can just set this up at home. Nah, come back, come back, come on. I need that bread. Too. <laughs> I got I got open hours today. <laughs> I got open hours tomorrow. Like, I'm like, damn. I'm realizing I'm spending five hundred a week. I'm just going to the studio. I'm paying rent in this m- I don't even live here. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it was a lot of bullshit. But then I realized that I was like, man, when you actually learning a craft, you actually got to tap all the way into it. Mm-hmm. You got to figure it out, the ins and outs. And now that I figured out how to teach myself, how to record myself, how to actually record, mix, and like put my put my music out by myself, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, I didn't realize it was that easy. I was just not learning, not teaching myself. Mm. Okay. Let's talk about, um. I just seen some Christmas videos you dropped on Instagram, man. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what, the, what's, the five, what's going on with that, man? What's, what's yeah, that, the five man? crazy days of Christmas. <laughs> you know, so, you know, right now I'm just, I'm on my ride. So I'm I'm giving you every little bit of who I am, like. Come on now, who don't love? Yeah. Come on now, come on now, who don't like? Who don't like? Just come on now, you can't you can't hide it from the world, like you know. So I look I I looked at that as like an opportunity. I didn't make no Christmas music, I ain't create make I ain't make no Christmas music, no Christmas jingle, no nothing. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna give y'all some Christmas content to show y'all that it's able to be done. Like I can promote something at the same time while I'm giving y'all a whole nother piece. Like I was. I only did that to catapult everyone's mind to listen to my my next video that I was about to drop. Mm. So I just made it all, put it all together as one. I was just being, I was brainstorming. Me and my manager, we pretty much be just brainstorming on certain new ideas that we'd be trying to do and put together. And I was like, man, I need to do this because it's, I'm about to have my breakthrough. And I'm like, I got to figure out something to do around Christmas every time. Mm-hmm. So I made it the five brazy days of Christmas, uh, uh, five, the five brazy days of Xmas, because, you know, it's always X-rated around me. So, you know, I keep it PG for sure, but it's for sure X-rated in my world. So, yeah. you know, when you, when you tap into the brazy world, you for sure is in a world of <laughs> no return. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a one-way Did you end. drop it on, like, um, <laughs> would you drop, like, videos like that on OnlyFans? Uh, it's the crazy thing is, I already that's like the next brainstorm of what I want to do. Like, you gotta, you gotta I gotta drop the, the X-rated version. Yeah, on. like that's exactly what I want to do because it's like there's money to be made everywhere. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm the, and my thing is like, I love strippers. Like, come on now, like I love we in Texas, you know, heart of 
<laughs> strip land, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah. I love going to the strip clubs. I love, you know, giving back to the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love giving back to the community, so it's fun, you know. At the end of the day, like, you know, I'll pay a couple of bills here and there. I think I, I just that matter of fact that is probably a dope idea for you to start an OnlyFans and just have your exclusive videos that are X-rated on OnlyFans and have people just pay. Yeah, you know pay what I mean? Go watch, pay to go. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you kind of on. I don't know if you can or you know if it's in the budget, but do a, a, a PG version you could drop on YouTube. Yeah, and an thanks. X-rated version. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Is I'm I, well, it's all in the building too, so. Yeah. You just gotta stay tuned. Yeah. yeah stay What's the tuned. you said you you was gearing up for the next album you about to drop? Yeah, well I'm about to drop an EP. Okay. What's I mean, it called? Hmm. Should I, should I tell them what it's called? Can we get exclusive? Can we get exclusive, <laughs> man? Can we get exclusive? So the uh, the EP is gonna be called Against the Grain. Hmm. So let that sink in for a second. Okay. Think of everything you can think of going against the grain. Yeah. Everything. And then that's just that's really just who I am as a person. I'm against all eyes. I'm against everything that you think that you're supposed to do. I'm against it all because I'm me. Mm. And if I wasn't me, I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to stand in front of you. I wouldn't be able to talk right now if I wasn't me. I'm with it. You got no choice but to fuck <laughs> with it. <laughs> I'm not saying this shit for you to fuck with you. I'm making you fuck with it. I'm going to make you fuck with it. Regardless of how you feel about it, I'm going to look at you dead in your eyes and say, you going to f*** with this shit or it's going to be something you like out of it. Yeah. Regardless of the fact, I'm going to get you to f*** with it. Ladies and gentlemen, Sco Brazy. Yeah, Sco Brazy in this <laughs> It's the biggest five. You know, I'm popping my shit. You know what I'm saying? The five's always going to be in the building. You know, you did. Yeah. Shout out to, hey, I appreciate you for even getting me on here and actually like. For sure. This is dope. Your setup's fire. Appreciate it, man. For sure, got to for sure, got to get some more people up on here for you. Yeah, man. For sure, man. Let's go brazy. Um, leave oh, your oh, one more, one more oh, thing, one more thing. Uh, also, we do got the brazy merch coming up soon. Uh, I want to keep making sure everybody understands. Tap into that shit because my merchandise is gonna be big. Like, really where where big. can I get it at? Uh, I'm not gonna put it online, but uh, I will be collabing with uh, Heights District. Uh, okay. That's in Dallas, so Heist District is gonna be like my manufacturer, all of that stuff, and also it'll be in stores over there. So that's where it's gonna be big. But then once the website and everything is created, we will have a domain for everybody to go and get it online. If you're not in Texas, all around the world, you can go ahead and purchase it everywhere. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Scope Brazy, appreciate you for tapping I in. I appreciate man. you. Yo, man, thank y'all for tapping in. This has been the Tap In Podcast. Holla. <laughs>